Hello everyone, Arjun on page. I'm working in this sketchbook and I've already put gesso on my page. I want a great base for uh, moving my paint on it uh, without it soaking directly and immediately into the paper. So, I've got here some magenta, some peach color, white and some yellow that I'm not sure I'm going to use. And I want to uh, smear it uh, like this all over the page and with a lot of water because I want to play with the water and removing some of the paint so now just so it would be easier and me I'm uh, flipping my uh, page and I'm taking uh, some soft brush with water and taking a little bit of the magenta and going like this and it's going to be quite random and just making sure I have lots of water now I'm just cleaning a little bit uh, my brush in the water and moving to the peach color again with water like so I'm letting them blend somewhat together and it's quite random again Just playing with it. And if I feel I don't have enough, I will just add later. Most of it is gonna get covered. This is just the beginning of my uh, background. Okay. So the yellow worked fine for me and just want to add a little bit more of the magenta in some places like so enough okay so I've got this and what I'm going to do now is take a little bit of water and I'm just dropping it on my page and gently i can't stress enough the very gently i'm going to take this a paper towel and tap in several places and it would lift part of the uh, paint and part of the water and it's gonna create some texture in the back And I'm moving uh, from time to time to a place that is not soaked with uh, paint and water. And if you don't like it, you can always uh, go back to your paints and go over and start it again until you are satisfied with what you have. If I have a little piece here that I don't like, I can go in and do something like this and go over and remove part of it and if I want more texture I'm going to do this again and dabbing and removing yeah shame but most of it is gonna get covered with my focal image but i like making this interesting background okay now this needs to be completely dry before we are doing anything else as you can see i ha i haven't ha used the white the yellow just gave me enough bright uh, into the page so basically this is it in terms of the background until it dries I'll be back okay so this is dry and now I want to add more a uh, visual texture to the back more details and I'm gonna go stamping 
and you can stencil, you can stamp whatever you like. I've picked this um, stamp, elongated stamp, because all my pages is going like this. It can be anything, it can be text, it can be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be anything like this. This one, I've this set I've purchased uh, on AliExpress. And I'm gonna start, I'm not sure about it, but I've picked Olive Grove uh, by Memento. If, and if this is, this one won't be uh, completely, uh, won't be enough on the page, then I have this Pine Needles Distress Ink by Tim Holtz. We'll see. Whatever works. Uh, for this, I really prefer the, the Memento because it's permanent uh, ink. But if this color won't work for me, then I'll switch to the Distress Ink. It's good enough for details because I don't want it to overwhelm my page. So I'm keeping with the Memento and just again putting this randomly on my page. And yes, it's going to get covered, part of it, but part is going to still be picking through. So that's why I'm always working on all the page, all the background. You never know what will be picking through. trying to be quick about it <laughs> and not overthinking it yeah okay so I've got this moving on to what I've planned for my focal image I've got this a uh, well I think it's wisteria a uh, Stencil, another purchase from AliExpress, and let's see. I think I'll put it here. Now I want to uh, use gesso first, so I will have a nice base for the color that will come on top. So let's take some gesso and some makeup sponge, and it's gonna be boring, but I will start with it and you will see what I'm doing and then I will come back when I'm finished with the gesso so gesso here makeup sponge taking a little bit and just tapping to get rid of excess and just going like this and as you can see it, the background is picking through and I don't care much it's gonna get also covered with acrylic paint but if I was worried and wanted some to make sure that the background does not pick through then I will just do a uh, two or three layers of the gesso so it's up to you. I'm just going to do the one because I know that I'm probably gonna use some darker colors for this on top of the gesso. So I'm gonna continue with this uh, stenciling with the gesso and then I'll come back. Finished uh, doing the gesso part uh, with the stencil. I'm moving on for the paint. I've got some deep green, deep uh, purple here and the magenta that I've used before and white. And I'm going to play with them. So of course I've got the leaf here and I'm gonna dip into this green 
and start stenciling with it but what I want to do is uh, take a little bit of white each time and just have variation in the color so it won't be completely one block of color I like when I'm stenciling to have variation in the color it looks better this way less flat but each one has to uh, decide for himself what he likes I really like to have all kinds of shades while stenciling and I can always go back if it's not dark enough in a place that I want and just dab and add a darker color like so I'm just moving in between dark and light with the white so it doesn't have a chance to dry and then I can play with the colors and of course if I don't like it I can always go over it and even if I don't like the color altogether I can always wait for it to dry just on top of it and do the, the whole thing again and I see I've got more leaves here so stenciling with the green here not that it really matters but just so now I've got the flowers here and I'm moving on to the deep purple and the magenta and the white and again I'm going to do the same thing just switch between the colors so I will have variation and I'm not cleaning or replacing my uh, makeup sponge I'm just it's dark enough and I don't mind if I have a little bit of green mixing with the purple The purple is just too dark for me and I'm playing right now by mixing the magenta and the white so it won't be so dark I'm just tapping the darker a uh, uh, purple in several places just again to lay, uh, make it less flat but otherwise most of the uh, color of these flowers I'm going for a softer lighter color and I will probably I can see now I will have to go over with white and mix it more until I get what I want because the magenta and the purple are quite strong here dabbing into the magenta in several places again variation there is no such flower that is complete block of color so it's more interesting this way and of course I can lift the stencil and in and it would be horrible I don't know we'll see <laughs> I don't know it can it's not really 
not working for me. Maybe I need to go bolder and do uh, the flowers in a stronger color and then try to push back part of my background. We'll see. So I'm going to now add more of this. I thought it would be too strong, but now I see that you can hardly see it with the background. So live and learn. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit better here. I need more. I had too much white before and it just yeah okay I'm leaving it be and then I'm going to work on making it pop more on my background and I need for this to dry first I'll be back I'm back so I just added with the stencil a leaf here and leaf here just wanted it <laughs> to spray don't know why and now I want uh, this to pop off the page right now I've got a lot of details and mess now there are two ways to go about it I can go around everything with a little bit of diluted white or I can go with black now I'm gonna start with the white I've got I still got here uh, the white paint and a fine brush with water and I'm gonna try this first and if I don't like it then I will go darker and I just want a very uh, thin layer and it doesn't have to be precise just to push back some of this background between all the details I have here now you can uh, also use all kinds of markers that are water soluble or anything like watercolor pencils can also work because you can go inside in between all this and in several places I'm taking white a little bit more without water just again so everything will be a little bit more prominent on this background and I've got quite some work here I can probably use in several places some white Posca pen it's also something to consider but right now I'm just keeping with this white acrylic paint and my brush I'm gonna take me a while <laughs> but I think at the end it will be worth it so I'm just keeping with it maybe I afterwards I will go in with some Posca pen just to make it a little bit more show, uh, prominent on the page. I can also go and give contour lines to everything with white. It can be also with gel roll pens. Anything goes and if you don't like white you can go with black really up to you you can even use gold <laughs> whatever will make everything pop so i'm going to continue doing this and i'll be back i'm back so <laughs> that was quite an undertaking uh, going with the white but I'm satisfied now uh, with the 
result. In some places, I switched to the white Posca pen just so it would be easier on me. And in other places, I just kept with the brush and the white uh, paint. Now I want a, <clears throat> some writing here, some words. And I've got this stamp. It's from a set from a Stamperia. I'm going to try and stamp it with this. I hope it will match this. A wilted violet distress ink and I hope it will be a nice print okay let's hope it's not crooked and putting it down and putting some pressure on and I'm really hoping it will come out nice. Nah, you can hardly see it. Let's try black. Okay, moving on. Trying archival ink. If not, I will stamp it on a printer paper and cut it and just add it to my page. I'm trying to, uh, I will try to be in the same place, but if not, I will just have like a shadow to what I've put before. <clears throat> and if not, and if it looks bad, then as I said, <laughs> I will cover it. I don't know. I think I will cover it and so it would be nice and that's it. So I'm going to try and find something. I don't want white printer paper. I want something softer and that won't jump on this page. So I'm going to find something and then come back. I'm back. Found some paper, <laughs> stamped on it and cut it out and glued it down. This is the paper I found. I wanted it to uh, be a little bit of a match for this color and I it seems like I can't st uh, stop doing things to this page now I've got some leaf uh, stamps and I want to go around this just so it will go with I don't know the rest of the page that's the only explanation I can give and I don't want it also to uh, look so harsh on the page so what I'm trying to do is use the stamp to just make everything uh, cohesive and to also a little bit blend into the background that's about it so I'm stamping it a, a, a little bit on top of the saying in hopes that it will be merged better into the rest of the page and well that's it just going to do this and call it a day on this page hoping that I will like it in the end something like that that's it now I'm happy <laughs> that's the page now I like it so this is it, I'm bringing it so you will see all the details. So this is it, thank you for watching, thank you for uh, leaving me comments down below and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.